within another, I guarantee you, within another 15 or 20 years' time, give it 20 years, there'll be no travellers. There'll be travellers, but they won't be classed as travellers. I get up in the morning and feed them hearts before I come up and take myself. And tell me, do you talk to them? I do food. I brush them down and give them a bit of hay and a bit of feed and that's all. And drink water. Yeah. Yeah. And would you tell them stuff? Tell them stories? <laughs> I grew up with the horses. Yeah. yeah. Loved them. We even loved the horses. The horse was like part of our family, you know. Um, my father reared a horse. He trained it to the way he wanted to train it. Quite, and so we all had a part in that. Mm. The trade of the horse and the tackle. My father used to make his own harness. My father was a tinsmith. So that skill is lost. Yeah. You know, there's very, very few and far between now of tradesmen. What have we got here? You tell us. A bridle. It's a bridle, exactly. Martin has put this back together. It's a job taking it apart, you see. If you take it apart, it's a bit of a job trying to get it back together again. So he has the nose band. What have you got here? Bits. The bit? Yeah. What kind of bit? What kind of action did we say the bit had? A knocker action or something. No cracker action. No, no, no. Huey. That's <laughs> Huey. That's brains over there in the corner. <laughs> My name is Martin Mungan and we have um, a chestnut white trotton filly, two year old trotton filly, square going filly, which we bought in uh, Dungarvan in a fair. Is she broken in? Is that she a right is broken, yeah. She's only broken about, yeah. I think, six weeks or something now, that's all. And do you live in Burr? I do, yeah. Yeah. Um, in are you in a house or are you in? I'm in a house, yeah. yeah. You like living in a house? No, Up front, no. Mm. Don't like a house. No, I do get very depressed in a house. No. Don't like in a house whatsoever. But just as I said, there's not much choice in the matter now these days because all the camps are gone and there's no one. There isn't anyone staying out around the roads anyway. I think it's nearly 90% of the travellers are all in houses now anyway. I'd sooner. It may be in a halt and say or something with a small family, maybe three or four families in it. And I miss out on the side of the road when I'll fire outside and all the kids are on the fire. Do you know what I mean? And I often. There's a part of our culture. There's a part of our culture. Yeah. It's the only same as a farmer. A farmer's culture is his land. And when that's took from him, what has he got left? In relation to horses, do you, how many do you have? About five. And how important are they to you? That's, so that's all I'm good for. That's that's our, our, our culture in everybody. That's our culture. You know what I mean? The house comes first with me. Come on. Come on. Come on. So Davy here. Davy takes as much of some horses as well as I do of my kids. There is livelihood. Years ago, that was the only way that they had of actually, you know, walking about or you know, moving from place to place was horses and things like that. Is, um, is Davy known well around? Oh God, he is. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Davy would be well known. Davy's, well as I always call him, devil of all devils. <laughs> Do you know, he, he, Davy says what to mean, and that's over and done with. Do you know? But he wouldn't be a uh, violent man. Now. I'll give him that. But all Davy lives for is his family and his horses. Do you think that, um, you know, say if a man like Davy didn't have horses, what what happened to him? Do you think? He died. You know, what does he live for? He doesn't drive. Tell me, Patrick, are you at your happiest when you're trotting? Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Love it. You're a survivor, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a survivor. You're a survivor, forget about all the odds. And Nancy, does she know you? Oh, she does. As yeah. soon as she sees me, that two here stands and she keeps winning. <laughs> how, how important is the horse to you? I love it. It's not the way I have been getting out like I love that. Do you still get the feeling you'd like to? Oh, I know. I was thinking I'm going to travel next summer. <laughs> yeah. And do you, have you done any of it since? No, I actually haven't been travelling for a long 20 years. Or that. But I'd always think, I can, I'd always in the back of my head think I'm going, next summer I'm going to travel. I never get to go travel. But the minute it hits me that I can go travel, I don't think I'd be able to cope with that. Is it an urge you get? Oh, it's an urge. It's a long one you get to, uh, to just get up and get out there. But you can't do it no more. Like, you know, if it, if it happened that I could go traveling, 
Does it make you sad? Is it? it makes me sad the sense that my grandchildren now will never know what it was to go travelling like that because the, the memories I have it is fantastic. I wouldn't trade them for anything. An old class of memories. And it, it's, it's desperate to think that they'll never have it, you know. Well, Davy's a very wise man and his description to me was that housing travellers was like catching goldfinches and putting them in a cage. You could feed them and you could water them. But how many of them would survive? Maybe half. Oh, the summertime is coming.